So what's interesting is that I know, I know, I don't really want to get into it, but I know you went through a whole Me Too thing. And what's interesting is the fact that and I wanted to point this out. It's like as long as I've known you, you've been an authentic dude. Like it, I've never. First of all, you know how anytime I see you, there's a, we always have a really good. There's always a good feeling when I see you. Like yeah, um, good chemistry, it's good yeah, energy, good energy. Yeah, and um, and you've always been a very authentic dude. And I think the same thing, the way you approach comedy, and whenever you, I always f- find it um more tr- like I'm always close, get close with PL- people who are being true on stage because there's an authenticity in that. But what's interesting is people don't understand that that authenticity, it, it flows through your pores. It, it comes out of your sweat because you're only being you and you only know how to be you. So then when you get these certain accusations or whatever, your chicken go, nah, come on, that. You like it, it, we know who you are because it's it's yeah. always the just it's always the steady flow. Well, it's really look, it's really lucky that I knew Kate before the fame, you yeah. know, for a number of reasons. But also, this is um, you know our particular situation. There's a reason it's just one woman. It was because she's mentally unstable, which yeah. makes it difficult because you can't really hate her, right? Um, you can't go, this is an evil person or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she was real unstable and we we knew her from college. Oh, okay. She wow. Lied. She lied about Kate and made up all this stuff about Kate. And in her mind, she sort of thinks that Kate stole her life, that she was supposed to be married yeah. to me. Really? She wow. Me. She was to be a famous comedian and married to a famous comedian. And it's just this kind of delusional. She was on and off medication. I had to kick her out of our comedy group because she was so unstable. And the real problem with that time was, and Kate and I both felt it was a great movement, but it allowed certain women to just say whatever they wanted. Right. And there really was no response. And you got all these guys that are denying it and who knows what they're involved. So if you just said, this isn't true, everybody go, well, that's what everybody's saying. Right, 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 right. right. And right. there was no way to come back out and say like, Hey, I have emails from her where she wanted me to do her stand up comedy show. Right. She wanted me, she wanted to get together and apologize for what had happened in college when she attacked me and made these allegations in college. Right. right, right. I, I couldn't do that because what she would have done is spun it into, well, I didn't know. And I was, I was just trying to repair this, but right. And I, and I, or, or, or here's what, what goes. I, I just couldn't bring myself to talk about it yes. until now. And now you look abusive because now you say, yo, you just, yo, you, you, all these things that you said I did, you can't, you dated me after we went yeah. to the movies. Well, we, but it, it's we really, saw, but it, we saw just uh, Mark for death. With Steven Seagal, like how? Uh, Dante, now you're getting specific, bro. That's Did real. You know, I like that's that. Also, that's how Harry I, look right now. I, I, I also like you. You said I had marked you for death, but then you wanted to see Mark for death. With you wanted to see it. You were the you one who chose the movie. No, but, but you know what I would have said was, how could she have wanted me to do? her stand-up show and her husband wanted me to do her stand-up show. Right, right. All these things she said I did were true, but she could immediately come back and go, well, I was afraid if I didn't invite you to do it, then I would, my career would be hurt. So they just, there was, it was, yeah, it's always, of, it's a, always kind of a, throw, the, throw, throw the witch into the, uh, <laughs> into the, into the lake. And if she floats, she's a witch. And if she drowns, <laughs> she's a person. You know, it just was that catch 22. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's all we could do was sort of hunker down and kind of, it really taught us to sort of understand that the media can be really dangerous and really vitriolic and, and, and really not even mean spirited, like really like um, the words. In, indifferent but, about whatever what the consequences are. They can be uh, malicious. They can okay. be really, really malicious and uh, vindictive and reckless when they want to be. Depending yeah. Oh, on absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's and almost you know like, but it's almost like it's not really malicious. It's really more about just making a thing. It's it's so they're so indifferent about how what they say affects the situation. It's no, almost it, like I yeah. I don't care. I mean, it's because the integrity in journalism has given way completely 
I would say given way, even with the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, these great institutions of journalistic integrity, all of that is given way to clickbait. And yeah. with, with Washington Post, with the New York Times, part of their clickbait is who's our audience? Let's let's cater to that audience. Let's look at this point of view. Let's not we're not going to get as many people reading an op ed about right. how terrible Trump is. Um, or, you know, we'll get more people clicking that and our mm. advertisers will get more views. Right. Then if we write something about, you know what, in this instance, Trump really hit it out of the park. Mm. Yeah. And so that sort of that's what happened. It's journalistic integrity gave way to sort of ad clicks and clickbait. And so now it's it's baked into the media to kind of put the dollar over any sort of integrity. Mm-hmm. And that that was sort of the most rude w- awakening version of understanding that that we could have. But it also g- gave us the real understanding of who we could trust in our own life. Who, who was a friend and kind of, you know, not stuck with us, but just said exactly what you said, which is we had people that, you know, know, know us a lot more than, you know, most anybody. And yeah. they kind of said, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, split on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it was, so it, it, it was a fucking nightmare for like a year yeah. and a half or two years. But um, it, it definitely made us understand, like, we can get through anything and we need to, take a different approach to interaction with the media, which kind of has gone to zero. You know, here's um, here's a, an interesting too. like uh, when that was going down, it, I, I, I just assume that you guys are so, you, you know, because I'm you know, man school 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man, better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.